Welcome everybody. I'm excited to show you today how to quilt the Kaleidoscope quilt. Um, um, I know you're all busy and I appreciate you joining me. Um, this week is Easter and, and I'm very excited to show you how to quilt this. So thank you for your time. Okay, so let's jump in. I've already opened up my automation and I've purchased some designs. Um, I found them on the website that I thought would look really good. And I decided what color I wanted to quilt at least my border in. So I'm gonna quilt my border with this dark blue because I don't want to detract from the look and the illusion of the kaleidoscope quilt. Now, on the gray one over here, it's fine to add a little color and a little pop because it's very colorful. But this one here, I liked that the dark blue kind of blended in and it made the pinwheel design really pop and stand out. So I decided not to quilt green uh, around the border to detract from that. Now I'm going to use the green on the blocks because I think because of the green center. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll be changing threads. So anyway, let's just jump in and we're going to go to the gold features. And inside the gold features, there's a feature called borders and corners. And that's what I'm going to be using today to quilt the border. I'm going to set my safe area. I'm just going to move up to the left top of the quilt. And then I'm going to move it down to the bottom right. And this will allow me to set my safe area. Now my blocks are about 15 inches, so I really want to make sure that my safe area uh, it's, a, it's almost 16 inches. So I may not be able to quilt all three blocks. I may have to turn my quilt and quilt the blocks to be the full size. Um, we'll just have to see on that. As I'm rolling, you lose quilting area or your throat space. So, you know, you need to pick designs that you can adjust as you're quilting to fit within the area and adjust to the size of the throat of the machine because this, the throat of the machine determines the size that you can quilt. So if you're starting out with like a large quilt and you have a smaller throat machine, you need to adjust your, the size of your design to work so it'll work from top to bottom. See, on the top portion, you can start out with a larger design, but as you lose, as you roll, you lose that quilting area. And so, um, so the design will have to be smaller and smaller and smaller. So if you know that ahead of time, you can just adjust your design to be the specific size so it looks nice and uniform and even. Okay, so let's jump in then. And this is your borders and corners screen. Across the top, you have some tools. You have your redo and undo. You have your, your zoom in and zoom out and your select border and a toolbox. And inside the toolbox, you see some nice tools. Right over here, I showed you the marking tool. Well, you have the marking tool right here. So I could mark all the way around and make sure that my border was within the area. So let's go ahead and show you how the marking tool works with borders and corners. And fabric comp, because I'm gonna show you fabric comp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over here to my left side and I'm going to pull my machine all the way down. Even though I'm just quilting a border, a corner that's gonna come down so far, I just wanna pull it all the way down. Okay, and so I wanna move it to the edge so that my needle is on the edge of my fabric and I'm gonna do my add. And do you see right, that dot right down there? It's, now don't worry, I haven't placed my border yet onto, so it doesn't know the location. I'm just making an outline of my border so that I can make sure that I'm staying within the lines. Now if you have a quilt that's a little wonky, um, see, I can tell this one's a little uneven. See, there we go. And that's why I'm doing a couple extra spots. I'm gonna go to the corner here. It kind of comes down on each corner. It's up a little higher in the middle. And that's what's nice about fabric comp because it's gonna help us fix that. And that is just kind of the outside. Now I'm gonna to move to the inside 
I make my line across, and then I'm going to go up to the inner corner to add. And then I'm going to just move across here. And I, I choose little sections to put a little mark. Like where it meets up at a point. And I'm just going to move to this inner left and then move down. So there's the outline of my border. I'm going to go back and I'm going to say okay down here at the bottom and it's going to take me back to my borders and corner placement screen. So right here it says border style and placement. So I'm going to come over here and decide what border style I want to use and we've got miter, corner, block, and none. Well, I'm going to use corner because I'm going to have a corner design that I want sewn along with my border. So that's the one I'm choosing and you can see it changed the style. So now let's go and place, make our placement of our border. So what I'm going to do is move right here to this outside corner again and I'm going to tap on this little dot right here, this section. You can see it's blocked off into sections. And this little pink upper left is that left. And see how it moves down? And now I'm going to come forward just a little bit and do the one right underneath it. And you can see when I tap on that section, it kind of highlights it. Now I'm going to do the inner portion of the border. And I'm going to go to the inner left corner and tap on that section, see how it highlights? And then I'm just going to move straight down and tap on the bottom one. So you see now my, my pink is aligned with my marking tool mark. So it's going pretty good. Now we're going to move to the left side and do the same thing. So we're going to start with the outer corner first. And I'm going to just tap on the upper one. Now I'm just going to pull it down a little bit to align the bottom and then I'm going to tap on the bottom and then I'm just going to move it in to the inner corner. See how it's moving? Okay, so there's my border. So now we've aligned it. Okay, and now we've made our placement of our border. My border will now sew within the area. That's why the marking tool is so nice because you can actually see how your design is really going to sew onto your quilt. So now we can set our margins and that's number two. Over here under border style and placement, and we're going to set our margins. So with borders and corners, when you're quilting the outside border, you want to have a, a little bit more of a margin to allow for your, your binding. So you want to come in a little further. So you want to unlock your lock so that you can set the outer different from the inner. And if you're not quite sure you have your quilt on straight and you want to do an outer and an inner margin, that just means that the design will sew within those parameters just a little smaller. So I'm just going to do an outer and I'm going to make it, and you can see it coming in. So that's a quarter of an inch. I just want it just a little bit more to allow for, um, you know, the unevenness at the top. And I don't really like to use the margin on the inner section because I like it to come all the way to the edge. And so I'm not going to set an inner margin, but you know, if you feel like you want to and you need to, sometimes it's kind of nice to see those designs sew within the border. It gives it a little bit different look. All right, so now that I've um, set my margin, I'm just going to go and get my patterns. I'm going to select my corner. I'm choosing, say, cheese. And I want to choose the corner first. So I'm going to open that up. And now I'm going to go and click on the border. And it's clear down my S's. And I'm just going to do my center. And see, it's kind of a fun, simple little border. Kind of looks a little kaleidoscopy. Um, but you can see as I've placed it, um, it's going to go outside 
my, my quilting area just a little bit right here in the center. Um, and so I'm going to fix that with fabric comp. So what I'm going to do is that now I'm ready to tap on sew all and we're going to connect to automation. And so now I can go over here and sew, but I don't want to because I want to come up here to my plugins and I want to come over here to fabric comp. Okay. So fabric comp is going to help make this so that this section right here, it's going to keep it within the parameters that I'm going to go and mark. It takes a little extra time, but it's worth it to have your, your design on your block sew correctly and stay within the border. Do you see the dark green going across? That's the first area that we're going to mark. And remember, I've already allowed for a margin, so I don't want to move my foot down in and make it more of a margin. I just want to go along the top edge, okay? So I'm just going to start tapping my little plus, and I'm just going to go along my top edge. And do it in increments because your quilt, see how it, mine came up? Well, mine's come up. And now it's going to kind of dip down just a little bit here in the center section like that. And now I'm going to move it down just a tad. And see how it kind of aligns that edge with how your quilt is placed on the frame. This really makes a difference. See how it's pulling it up? So I'm just going to move along here, just making my little marks so it pulls it. And right here, it's going to start dipping down again. Okay, now I'm to the edge. I'm done with that. I want to tap on next. And now I'm going to do this outer right edge. I'm just going to mark along it. And this kind of has a little dip as well. But you can see how it just is aligning with that marking tool. Okay, that's probably about as far as I need to go. And now I can tap on next, do my inner. And I don't need to go too far. And now I can tap next, and now this area right here. All right, I'm done with my fabric comp, and I'm just going to tap on OK. So now you can see my design is adjusted a little bit better. Um, so it's going to sew and stay within my border, and that's exactly what I want it to do. So now I can tap on sew. And so it's going to move over here to the left, and this is where it's going to start sewing. And it'll do one single stitch. I'm going to hurry and pull the bottom up and just let it go. And stand back. Don't lean up against your pole. You'll distort the design. So stand back and just let it do its thing. And it's just a simple little design, but you know what? Sometimes the simple designs are the prettiest. I'll show you how I'm going to sew one of the blocks, and then when I join you next, I'll show you the completed quilt with the binding, I promise. My goal is over Easter, it's to get all my bindings on my quilts. We're almost done with our top border. Okay, 
Now, now that this top borders down, I, ha I have a lot of um, quilters ask me, well, how do you quilt the sides? What I do is I quilt the top, the center section, and then the bottom border. Then I turn the quilt so that I can quilt the, side, um, the sides. So it becomes the top and the bottom. It is easier to turn your quilt rather than quilting one little section at a time all the way down. It will make your design look nice and consistent and even if you will turn, are willing to turn the quilt. But my challenge to you is, is try it both ways. You know, try, even if you're free motion quilting, try the top border first and then quilt um, the side borders as you're quilting all the way down, okay? Then try it turning the quilt and see if there's not a difference in how it, um, it's, it quilts. It, I think it quilts a little more consistent, a little evenly, and then you're not having so many start and stops in each section all the way down on the sides. I just like the look of one smooth fluid so it doesn't look like your thread broke every four or five inches. So anyway, that's my challenge to you is to see what kind of quilting you like. So if you like quilting a section at a time down the edges, uh, be my guest because I'm all for quilting how you want to quilt. Okay, so now I'm going to take just a minute and change my thread so it is the, the bright green thread. Okay, and so I'm still in the automation, but I want to bring my bottom thread up. I can now cut my thread and I can tap on finished quilting, okay? So now I can get out of borders and corners and I'm going to roll my quilt just a little bit so I can quilt my block. So I'm gonna show you what one block looks like and then I'm gonna, you know, leave you till next time and then you're gonna see my beautiful kaleidoscope quilt when it's all finished. So let me take this off first and <clears throat> let's roll it. And um, like you can see on the Cuson Queen, I'm not using the white cl quilt clips because I have put my batting up over the pole and I needed a little wider quilt clips. I, um, it's nice to have a selection of quilt clips. I use the two inch quite a bit as well because I don't like my, I love to float my fabric and I don't like my batting dragging down so I'm stepping on it or others are stepping on it. So if you can, when they go on sale, purchase them because purchase the two inch if you don't have the two inch. If you don't have the, the one and a half inch, oh, get those as well so that you have a selection for how you quilt. And now you can see that this is rubbing on the throat of on the arm of the machine, so on the bed of the machine. And so I'm gonna to have to raise it. And I don't want to roll it all the way up because I wanna make sure that I can quilt to the corners. And so that gives me enough and I wanna move it across. And I don't know, it's gonna be pretty close. So I might wanna undo that just a little bit. Just one little ratchet, okay. Yeah, so that gives me enough clearance. And that's what you want. So I'm just gonna pull my my batting down here and smooth it out. Cause that's one complete block. And then I'm gonna tack down my edges a little bit more on the end here. All right, let's put my quilt clips back on and then I can tighten it up a little bit. Now, because I'm using the block design, oh, there we go. I'm going to just tighten it up a little bit to give me some tension. There we go. All right. Now I'm gonna see how far down I can get it. Oh man, that's so close, but I'm not gonna be able to do my full block. Darn it. So, I'll have to do four sections. That's okay. We can do that. So let me change my thread really quick. Okay. Here we go. Let me get out of the borders and corners. 
and I'm going to go come into Select and Sew. And I'm going to get out of these patterns and I'm going to go back into patterns of batch. And this was the one I wanted. Okay. So you can still see I have my marking with my marking tool and I want to get rid of those. So I'm going to go in over in here. I went into select and sew. I'm going to go into my marking tool and I'm going to remove all and that gets rid of it. So you don't have that on the screen. So we're going to do each block section one at a time because I, I don't have enough area to quilt the full block size. Um, so I am just going to come over here to my left corner. And oh, I'm still in. I want to go back to my placements. Four points. And I want to tap on this one right here. I want to go across. Now I'm going to say OK. And I am ready to sew. I'm just going to use a single stitch. Because I know it's going to start and stop in that corner. So I just want to do a single stitch. All right, so now I'm just going to tap on sew and let it do its thing. I'm going to, after, I'm not going to lean on it. When it starts doing its tie offs, you can cut that little piece. finished and so I will continue on and I will quilt the rest of my my little squares but you can see it's looking really cute and really fun um, so I'm really pleased with the designs I'm glad I did the green um, and so yeah so I will see you in a couple weeks and I look forward to hearing from you. So please email me if you get a chance, Carla with a K at graceframe.com. If you want this pattern, just email me and I will um, send you a PDF. Um, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.